Hi everyone, I got a question about truth tables um, and I figured I'd make a quick video for people kind of giving a little tutorial. Uh, the reason why is because I think this is a topic that gives students a lot of trouble. I know it is, I've taught this class enough to know. Um, but it's not as hard as you as it seems once it kind of clicks, once you get the hang of it, they're actually pretty easy, but it takes a while to get there. And until you get there, they're so hard and frustrating that I thought maybe a uh, little video tutorial would help people out. So the idea with truth tables is if you have two statements, two propositions, maybe we'll call them P and Q, then that gives you four possible realities in which you could live. Either P could be true and Q could be true, or P could be true and Q could be false, or P could be false and Q could be true, or P could be false and Q could be false. These, each of these things can only be true or false. So that leaves you with four different possibilities, two possibilities here, two possibilities here. Um, if you realize that these are the only four possible situations that the world can be in, then you can answer all sorts of questions about these different propositions. So the first level to kind of understand is what not P and not Q mean. And so often, I don't know how these are written in your book, I should have looked this up first, but often you'll see it written something like this for not P, or maybe they just use English in your book and say the words N-O-T-P. Not P is just the opposite of P. If P is true, not P is false. If P is false, not P is true. Not P is just what P is not. So in this first row here, I'd put an F down. In this second row here, I'd also put an F down. In this third row, I'd put a T down. And in this fourth row, I'd put a T down. Note that I'm only looking at this P column here, not the Q column at all, because not P has nothing to do with Q. It only has to do with P. Similarly, not Q only has to do with Q and not anything to do with P. So if I want to figure out not Q, all I got to do is stare at this column right here and kind of write down the opposite. I see a T, I'll write an F. I see an F, I'll write a T. See a T, I'll write an F. See an F, I write a T. And so that's relatively straightforward. When these get harder is when you start combining these things. Whoa, what happened there? Uh, okay, hopefully this will still work. Yep. Um, so I could ask you, I could say P or Q. And sometimes this is written with a, um, with like a V looking thing. Uh, let's see, or is that and? No, that's or. Um, but I think your book would write it more like this, P or Q. What P or Q is asking you is, is there a T in either the P column or the Q column? So think about, is there a T being the question this is asking? Is there a T in either the P column or the Q column? In this first row, hell yeah, there is. There's one right here. There's also one over here, but I didn't even need this one. The minute I saw a T right here, I knew that I'd put a T here because there is a T in either the P column or the Q column. There it is right there. What about in the second row? Yeah, that's still a T because it's asking me the question, is there a T in the P column or the Q column in this second row right here? And there is, there's a T right here. Yeah, this is an F, but it doesn't matter because I already earned my T over here. What about this third row? Supposed well, to be a T as well. And you're like, wait, why is it a T? There's an F over here. Right, but there's a T here and you have a T in either the P column or the Q column, so you put a T here. Uh, what about this last one? Well, maybe you'd see this last one be an F. The reason this is an F is because if I look at my P column and my Q column, there is not a T in the P column or the Q column. I needed at least one T, and I did not have one, so I had to put an F over here. So what else can you do with this? I could ask you, instead of or, I could ask you and. So I could ask you P and Q. That's very similar to what we just did with P or Q, except now the way you earn a T over here is if there's a T in this column and in this column. The way you earned a T before was if there was a T in this column or in this column. But now you earn a T in this new column if there's a T here and here. So in the first row, there's a T here and a T here, so I've earned my T. In this second row, I do not have a T here and here. Right, this is an F. I only have one T. I needed two T's. I did not earn my T over here, so this is an F. Similarly, I don't have two T's, so this is an F. I do not have two T's, not even close, so this is an F right here. So that's the difference between the or and the and statement. The last one that gives people the most trouble is the if then. So I'm going to leave a little bit more room for this, and I'm actually going to make more columns after this. So I said the last one, the last major category, 
but you'll see combining these together can be hard. So I could ask something like if P then Q. You know, what the hell does this mean? The easiest way to think about this right here is you may have to earn your T. You may get it for free. It might be really easy and you just get throw down a T, but you might have to earn it. How do you decide whether you have to earn it or not? Well, you'll have to earn your T if there's a T in the P column. So you start by looking at the P column here, you see this if P, you look at the P column, and if you see a T right here, you know you got work to do. If you don't see a T right here, like you do in the third and the fourth row, it's super easy. You don't have to earn your T at all, you get it for free. If you do not see a T in the P column here, you automatically get a T here for free, it's super easy. But if there is a T in the P column, then you have to earn, you have to do some work to put a T over here. And the way you earn it is by looking in the Q column and seeing if you see a T. So because there's a T right here, I have to look at the Q column. And when I look at the Q column, I see a T here, so I put a T here. Because there's a T here, I have to look in the Q column. But when I look in the Q column, I don't see a T, so I can't put a T over here. On this one, I don't even have to look at the Q column. I don't have any work to do. I get the T for free because I only have to look at the Q column if I see a T here. So if P then Q is kind of a strange one, if, but the easiest way to think about it is you only have to look at the Q column, you only look here if you had a T in the P column. So if there's a T here, then look for a T in the Q column. That's really what this statement is saying. So okay, there's one more level of abstraction for these. Uh, maybe I can tack them on here, maybe I'll do two examples. And it's when you start to combine these things. So what if I said not P or Q? So it's a lot like this one where we have P or Q, but for this one, I referenced these two columns, right? This P and this Q. That's not what I'm gonna do anymore. Now the two columns I'm gonna reference will be not P, so this column, and Q this column right here, not P or Q, I'm looking at these two columns right here. And then I'm playing the same game. All I gotta do is say, do I see a T in this column or in this column? Well, in the first row, I see a T in one of those columns, it's right here, so I put a T down here. In this second row, I do not see a T in either of these two columns, so I put an F right here. And be careful, there is a T right here, but that doesn't matter. P has nothing to do with this question. This question references not P and Q. So you're looking at these two columns. In this third row, yeah, I see a T. I see two of them, but I only needed one of them to earn my T over here. In this fourth row, yeah, I got a T right here. So this would be a T here. Uh, let's see, hardest question I can come up with. What if I said, if not Q, then not P? What a mess. That's a really hard question. It's if then, which was the hardest one from before, and it doesn't reference P or Q, it references not Q and not P. If not Q, then not P. Well, what I'm gonna do for this problem is I am going to first look at the not Q column, so this guy right here, and this will tell me whether I have work to do. If I see a T in this column, then I have work to do to earn my T over here. If I don't see a T in this column, like what happens in the first row and the fourth row, or the third row, it's super easy. Right? If I don't see a T, I don't have any work to do, I get my T for free. If I don't see a T in the not Q. But if I do see a T in the not Q, like this second row and this fourth row, then I have some work to do. And the work I'm gonna do is I'm gonna look at the not P column. I'm gonna look at this guy right here. So in this case, because there was a T right here, I had to look over here and I had work to do. And I did not do that work, there's an F over here. I didn't satisfy my criteria, so there's an F over here. In this one, I had work to do because I saw a T, but it's all good, it's okay to do the work. The work passed, I won the game. I played the game and I won, I saw this T over here. This ends up being a T right here. If not Q, then not P would be filled out like this. Um, in this specific case, know that these two answers happen to be the same. There's a true, then a false, then a true, then a, then a true. Um, that's because this statement right here is just what's called the contrapositive of this statement right here. And the contrapositive is always logically equivalent to a statement. I don't remember if you guys have gotten into if-thens and contrapositives and all that yet. So don't worry about that fact unless you've heard of what a contrapositive is and then you're like, oh, that's kind of cool. It ties together two different topics from this class. Maybe you don't think it's cool. But for your purposes, the purpose of this video with truth, 
was truth tables. And all you need to know with truth tables, maybe here's a quick summary of everything, is that if you have two statements, P and Q, that leaves you with four possible realities. TT, TF, FT, and FF. Those are your four possible realities. Set your thing up like this. Often this will already be set up for you. And then there's an easy type of question, just the not question, which is just the opposite of that column. There's the ors and the ands, which are a little bit harder. Just know for ors, you earn a T if you see an, a T here or here. Whereas with ands, you earn, only earn a T if you see a T here and here. And then there's the third type, the hardest type, the if-then statements. But for the if-then statements, you only have work to do. It's only hard to earn a T if you're playing the game. And you only play the game if the P is a T. So if the first thing here is a T, then you have work to do. You look over here and make your decision based on that. If this is not a T, you get your T for free. You get it automatically, which is why I put in a T here and here. And if you understand the green and the red, you can do these blue things, even though they seem really hard, because it's the exact same stuff you did here. You're just referencing other columns. That's the idea with truth tables. Hope that helps people out. If there's other videos like this that I can make people, let me know. If you have feedback on these videos, like, yeah, I got the point 10 minutes ago and you went super slow. Go faster next time. Or don't speak so damn fast. I couldn't follow what the hell you were saying. Write more. Write neater. Use more colors. Whatever your complaint is or constructive criticism, let me know and I'll try to make the videos different for the rest of the, this class. Um, hope that's helpful for people. And I guess I'll end this here.